Here we go. Right, so we're back, guys. Thank you for being patient. Hope you had a nice little break. I've got my cup of tea on my Game of Thrones mug, which you can't really see. Mmm. Lovely. Right. Sponsored by Twinings. <laughs> if only. Um, you're terrible, Richard. You're terrible. Sorry. Sorry. I, I get scared by you putting a can there because it's so close to my PC box. I'm just like, oh. Mmm. So, anyway. So let's get on with the next session of the show, which, of course, is interview with our lovely Arisian, who, for those who don't know, that music, as I mentioned well before the break, for those who've just come in, um, was some of his music, funnily enough. That was uh, It's Time, which is an original mix of his. And, yeah, we're just going to have a little discussion with him. I would game, of course. But we'll talk a little bit about his music as well as background in gaming, if that's cool with you, Arisian. Sounds good to me. Yeah, okay. So should we get it started? Something really basic. So... What was the gaming experience that got you really hooked on gaming, and why? The gaming experience. Experience. Um, I think it started for me. Um, I believe it was with, or it was the first roller coaster game, or it was the first Age of Empires game. Okay. Um, that's when I really started to get into gaming. Um, and it was, it it it, it it's started to grow into an into a serious addiction really really quickly um so that so that was kind of a problem i needed to tone it down a little bit um but yeah the 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 the, the, the um, rts kind of games and and uh, the whole economical ma e economics the whole money management yeah, go. management games. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's re was, was really where I started. Mm -hmm. What was it about those that attracted you into gaming, specifically? I don't know. I thought it was funny to see the, the little little dudes chop down some trees. <laughs> okay, fair enough. <laughs> fair enough. I mean, like chopping trees have never been I, so mesmerizing. you you got to keep in mind, I was six. True. Okay? True. I, I think everyone's man. attention span and fascination gets quite fixated at that age. Hell yeah. It's awesome, it was, it was awesome. awesome. Just like they took an axe and they chopped the tree. It was so awesome. I know the thing is though, you watch back, people do that in real awesome. life, it's the most boring thing ever. <laughs> Unless you're really into wood. And I know that sounds really wrong. <laughs> 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 Sorry, that was the worst way to word that possibly. <laughs> And Unless you're really into lumberjacking, that doesn't really sound any better. <laughs> Look, leave these jokes to Aisha Taylor. <laughs> oh god, no, no, no! Don't compare us. Reasons why I can't no. have nice things. Oh. Char. <laughs> I can't drink my cup of tea now because I'm not. Sure, Char. Oh, 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 just hit my uh, tooth on it. Ooh. <laughs> This is the interview section, by the way. I know, I know. Sorry, we're going to carry on This now. is the professional <laughs> portion of the podcast. <laughs> right, let's go, let's go, let's go. Right, favourite three games of all time. Uh, go, Receive, go. Favourite three games of all time. Um, Mass Effect, um, Age of Empires 2, mm -hmm. and uh, Guild Wars 2. Fair enough. Any particular reasons for those three? Um, Mass Effect because the, whole, the story is absolutely amazing. Uh huh. Um, except for the last one, that one is absolutely <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Um, Age of Empires two mainly because the because of the whole. Um, it it was the first game that I actually start actually played multiplayer, so it has a really really big nostalgic value to me. Um. And a Guild Wars 2 because I absolutely love multiplayer RPGs. It's the, the whole community around role-playing games is there's no better community around any kind of genre than, than, than the whole MMORPG. Okay, fair enough. Um, if you could change anything about the games industry, what would it be? I would get rid of EA. <laughs> Just outright ban them. Yes. <laughs> it's one way to go. It's like you're out, you're fired. Yeah. Yeah. Once they Just get some involved, dragons with... dead on their ass as well. Oh, Just yeah. be like, no, nope, they... not vested. 
<laughs> once so you... they they get involved with the development process of a game, it's 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 gone. It's done. Oh. Tainted as far as you're concerned. Fuck yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll never buy you an EA game as a birthday present <laughs> then. <laughs> once a note down. Well, I mean, I don't mind the games, but they they just get way too involved with the new the new releases. It's it's absolutely terrible. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay, so moving on a little bit now to just like the music side of things, because obviously that's what you're really, really into, and that's what don't you do on a day to day basis. That. Huh? Don't know anything about that. I got my people for that. Mm. <laughs> so let's start with how you got into music production initially. How got I into it? Um, how did you get into it? Yeah, when did you get into it? That kind of thing. Well, it, it I, I dropped out of school. And because I was underage, I, I was still uh, required by law to go to school. So I went to a, a little, yeah, it's, 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 it's a class that makes you flow, in, flow back into to essentially college. Right, so like a reintroduction and, um, thing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And there was this, this really weird looking dude that was playing around with... Um, with with some music software and I thought it was fascinating. He was making music on his PC and I didn't know it was freaking possible by just clicking some things and you got a freaking song. It was absolutely amazing. So I I, I started messing around with that program mm-hmm. and I created an absolutely terrible track, absolutely horrible. It sounds I I I. I I believe it's still somewhere on Newgrounds. I don't know if you guys know the website. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was yeah. the place to be for music back then. Mm-hmm. And um, it's 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 horrible. I I, I I think I can find it for you guys later. Um, but it was so much fun to put uh, so much time into a track and so much feeling into a track. And then, then you have a fucking song. There's nothing better than making making a track and have other people enjoy it. There's no better feeling in the world. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I I started experimenting with that, and back in that in in, in those years I had a severe depression, and um, music actually got me out of it. I, I found I've, I I could put all my feelings into music, and and it it helped me. So I I kept developing the skills. And. Uh, that's that's kind of kind of how I got started. Right, fair enough. So again, that kind of answers what I'm going to go on to next. Is what drew you to it really? So it's obviously your early experiences with your situation in school. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Well, particularly this genre was uh, so dance, basically trance music was uh, played by my uh, older brother. Okay. Since since always actually since since dance music has been around, um, back in the days it came from Germany and stuff. Um, my my brother always played it, and it, uh, he had these these mi- these mixing panels, and it was that that's kind of what got me interested in in this genre, and mm-hmm. and why I chose it. It's just something that I got from growing up. Fair enough. Is there a particular aspect of music production that drew you to it? That got you really, it's... really heavily engaged? Um, God. It's, um, it's, it's almost, you, you're, you will almost get into some kind of tra- trance when you're um, sitting behind your PC and just making stuff out of nothing you're literally making a, a complete track out of absolutely nothing you got nothing in your hands you just got a blank screen and you're making music There's, it's, the feeling is is indescribable mm-hmm. fair enough um for those who are interested in music i think this will be particularly interesting for them but uh what, what software what combination of software do you use for your music production um the the program that I'm using to uh, the, the studio program that I'm using is uh, called FL Studio 12, Fruit Loop Studio. Mm-hmm. Um, and inside of that program, you have different plugins that uh, and synthesizers that 
that you use to to create certain sounds. Um, and the the main plugin that I'm using is Spire at the moment. Um, right. That's a um, a synthesizer that's so easy to use, but it's so you, you, so um, widespread in in in. in um, God, I, I can't even find words. Highly available. Versatile. It's so, indeed there you go. It's yeah. so versatile. It's it's incredible. Mm. Fair enough. Is there anything you used to use that you've kind of moved away from? Um, I used to use um, not not when it comes to studio software. Mm -hmm. When it comes to a plugin, I used to use Citrus. It's one of the the plugins that come with uh, with FL Studio. Oh, okay. And uh, it's it's a good synthesizer, but yeah, it's it's kind of free. So mm. does that have some sort of limitation with it? It has a lot of limitations. Okay, cool. How how long does it typically take you to make a piece? And what's That's... the kind of process behind it? That's a really difficult question because a, a track can be made in literally an hour. Um, and and some tracks I, that I've made are literally made in one to two hours. Um, but I've also tracks that are that I'm still working on and I've been working on them for the past five to six months. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it depends on, on timing and, and inspiration. Mm -hmm. um, Sometimes when you're working on a track, it just, it just, you just have it, you just get it, and you, it, the, the inspiration keeps flowing. And um, I've I've had times where I'm just working on a track, it sounds absolutely amazing, and then the next day it's you, you fire it up and it's like, why the hell did I make this crap? <laughs> it sounds absolutely terrible. Yeah, I, th so, I think I kind of know where you're coming from like for me with building in minecraft because that's what i do like i have days where i have a complete blockage and then yeah. other days where it yeah. just flows and that's like knocking work out like no tomorrow i th i think everyone that's being creative has this problem mm. yeah kind of like the writer's block scenario yeah yeah totally um i'm a filmmaker my background so i make films in my spare time yeah same thing yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we've all got a bit of shared experience in that respect. Fair enough. <clears throat> what What does the process behind the music production look like? Where do you kind of start, and and how does it follow through for those that are kind of interested in the technical side of music production? Um, the 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 process. Well, I when when I build a track, I always start with a with a uh, with an atmospheric sound. So I always make sure the atmosphere is right of the track, and most of the time I just get the the inspiration for the atmosphere from listening to other tracks and uh, the mainly the weather actually it helps a lot to set the mood um so once i have the atmosphere i start working on on uh, on the bass and the melody and once those are together i actually start taking them apart again and build up the track from nothing okay then once you've kind of built it is that like um a process after that where you add more effects and more layers or yeah the um, once you when, once you build a track the, the building of a track is actually really really simple and you 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 can get it done in in a couple minutes um i spend most time at uh mixing and mastering that's what you call it okay um so it's it's making the final mix it's making sure the sounds don't clash with each other um Making sure the, the the quality of the track is actually actually good enough to to be published. Um, that that can take I, these days. I I will take at least a week for one track to to mix and master. Fair enough. Um, what do you personally find to be the trickiest aspect of music production? The trickiest aspect. Um, the 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 most the, the trickiest thing is not to repeat yourself. It's so easy to re repeat something that you've already done. Um, 
you, you want to keep innovating and want to keep making sure that your your stuff is still relevant. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's, that's that's really really difficult, especially in the in a time and age where we live uh, with with almost every song being dance music. <laughs> yeah, that amalgamation of pop and dance and yeah, yeah. There's a lot of um, formulaic stuff now, especially in the mainstream. Yeah, yeah. A lot of stuff is already being done. Of or, or yeah, it's, it's difficult to to do something new. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Um, looking at obviously the way you've come into fruition, and um, also, I mean, I came across you through streaming, really, didn't I? So, um, your music being on other channels, and we kind of got talking. Um, which which kind of leads me on to my next point. Like, I know you work with a lot of streamers and YouTubers, yeah. Um, to provide you know content, audio content for free, much like we're using today on the podcast. There's tons of streams out there on Twitch. Um, I know Cyanide and a bunch of others have used your music in the past. What would you say is the biggest challenge that um comes to the table when working with streamers and YouTube, but also the most rewarding part of doing so? Um, the biggest challenge is to um, to keep your music in their playlist um, because so many artists, so many musicians are currently um, working on Twitch and on YouTube, which was not the case when I started there. Um, yeah, it was definitely a lot the, more narrow when I came yeah. across you. I mean, 2011, yeah. 2012. The big labels have already also started taking um st- taking or, or getting taking ground on on twitch and on youtube um so it's really difficult to stay stay in their playlist um but the most rewarding part of that is that you get instant feedback from uh from the the, the streamers and the and the viewers mm-hmm. um and and sometimes it's it's it can actually help you develop better better tracks it's 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 really really um it's 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 not as as nasty and 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 mean as people think that that twitch is actually it's good to know i'm sure a lot of people will hopefully feel encouraged by that for any aspiring music people out there i hope so so. it's it's a great platform to get started yeah yeah and on that note, actually, are there any good resources you can recommend out there that will give people kind of a jump start, a 101 to how to get into this, to get the basics? Is, that, is there any anything you can recommend? Uh, basics to making music? Yeah, like a, like a resource or a guide or... No, no, not really. The, um, I always say that if, if you want to make music, um, then just get going uh l- play with the program take your time get to get to know the program that you're using um your your first track is going to be shit your second track is also going to be crap you you at, le- at make at least 20 tracks until you actually uh start making it public um because the f- the first 20 30 tracks are absolutely shit and i've i've had this problem as well I, I started to publish my work too soon um but but take your time making music and and once you think your tracks are actually good enough and you start to publish them don't be worried about the haters um i i've i've actually got the advice from well-established producers and djs that um it saying that if you like your own work others will like it as well you will always have the people that will hate it, but even if one person will like it, work works worth it. Um, and if you really want to get going, there are there's there's one particular program that I can uh, really really recommend to get your music out there on Twitch. It's actually Pretzel Rocks. Um, ah, yeah, the extension yeah, that they've recently added. Yeah. yeah, they are absolutely amazing people. The artists that are working with them are so supportive um the, the the development team behind pretzel rocks is also experienced in the music industry 
so they know what they're talking about they can give you feedback on your work um, just just don't be afraid to to show what you've made and don't don't be be stupid enough stupid enough to ignore the feedback that you get because it's so so valuable mm -hmm. that's great and that kind of actually leads on to kind of where i want to go next with this actually um obviously everyone's human everybody makes mistakes if you could give any advice to someone who's just starting out to, to avoid a mistake you've made or something you've learned over the course of your experience of doing this what what would it be um so it's something super the, important you think the the biggest mistake that you can make is but is just not doing anything you want to do i mean the the, the the that that's something that keeps people from going into music is being scared to do it don't be scared to make to do what you want to do it's it so many so so much um talent is being lost because they are afraid to show what they got Mm -hmm. so just give it a go basically yeah fair enough um so looking at what you've recently done um do you want to just kind of give people a flavor of your recent work that's been published as well as kind of what's coming up for you in the very near um, future sure uh i can i can send you a link with uh with my l with actually an unreleased track that i've been uh, experimenting with so give Do you me want me a to second. share that with chat? Um, no, the link cannot be shared yet. No, nope. okay, because it's still so private. Yeah, for those actually interested, while Aristian's fetching that, um, you can actually find Aristian's work on SoundCloud, and you can also find his official YouTube channel here, which has all his stuff too. And he's also on Twitch. You do uh, the occasional music production live stream, yes. don't you? Yes, yes, that's right. Yeah, so if you want to get engaged in music production or ask more questions, that's a really, really good space to ask. And you can also find Arisian on Twitter too. So if you've got any questions or you want to find more of his work or have a discussion, you can always find him there at, at, Arisi, at Arisian as well. So it's a really Well, not only spot. questions. I mean, um, even if you get started into music or you feel like getting started don't be afraid to hit me up i have uh helped several people now to get that started into music mm -hmm. and i will actually help you with your first track i will give you feedback i will if it's good enough i will help you publish it even that's super super awesome i, I think having more people that are willing to mentor and help out is a really really important thing especially with how swamped it is even if you just look at youtube and twitch specifically yeah, so and it's that's, great that's, to have some guidance. It sure is, and that's the beautiful thing about music that most of the artists are are always willing to help help out beginners. Mm -hmm. It's it's such a welcoming community. Yeah, that's great. That's really great. Um, but yeah, if you want to drop me that example, that'd be fab. <laughs> um, I assume you don't want that played on stream though today private and all the rest of it right uh yeah the link must uh, must stay private yeah okay i'll keep that for later then i'll um check that out in a bit um in the meantime though what are kind of your plans moving forward uh currently the plans are are i i can't say too much yeah um, no, that's fair enough i'm 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 working on a new album which i uh which i announced two months ago or something yeah. Um, I started working on it, um, which I hope will be done next year or something, and at the end of next year. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm talking with some established producers and DJs um, about maybe yeah about just just about the future. You never know what comes out of it. Mm. Uh, and currently, I'm just focusing on the Amsterdam Dance Event, which is uh, is coming soon. Yeah, what? Well, how far off is that then? Is it? Just... That's uh, that's like halfway October. Oh, okay. So yeah. Yeah, is there an events page for that? Uh, let's... I, I'm sure there is. Yeah. If you if you Google for the Amsterdam Dance Events, 
there's there's so many things that are going on that we yeah well hopefully like i said if anyone wants to pop down there when that happens <laughs> you just casually rock up a, lo a lot um, of workshops as well so yeah so but you know that's another good event if you want to go see Arisian's work and, and talk to other people that are in that industry it's a good place to find people definitely just, yes yeah you know, if you just happen to be knocking about amsterdam <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> that's okay. So, uh, that's about it, really, for my questions. Anyone else got any questions? Anyone from chat as well? Um, we can pose any questions uh, to Rishi. Oh, okay, yeah, Rishi's uh, gone on. Go, on. Go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, this might be tough for you, but name your top three video game soundtracks of all time. Ooh. <laughs> um, I have no idea what the names are of these tracks. Okay, um, just tell us the game. Uh, yeah, just from what, I, what game. I think. My my all time favorite soundtrack is um, is by I I don't even know if it's by Big Giant Circles, but it's from Mass Effect Two. Oh yeah, that's that's a good. Soundtrack. It's 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 the once you hear it, you will recognize it immediately. Um, probably from Dragon Age Inquisition as well. Um, it's you will hear it in the in the in the menu. It's iconic, um, and Edge Vampires too, of course. Once you hear it, yeah. you will uh, you yeah. will have it stuck yeah, in your Vampire head for the next uh, next me. two months or something. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. Um, Anything else you want to ask? No. no. What about you, Kev? All right, I have uh, two questions. One more music, uh, techy side. The other one's not so much. Um, First one is really simple. Do you play any any instruments? No, I can't okay. even read notes. <laughs> so yeah. Okay. Um. So that sort of answers my next one. Is like <clears throat> when make making music. You mentioned that you work on the bass line for M melody as one of the first things. Uh, do you pay attention to like augmenting things? I'm not even sure if augmenting different chords is a thing in this type of music or do you pay attention to chord progression or I the reason why I asked this stuff is because I took a few music theory classes in college so I know some of the like progression or natural progression of some music if that makes sense so I was wondering like do you pay attention to like okay so it's this chord so i could either like augment this chord or oh hey since the last two chords were like this the next one kind of has to be kind of like this or for it to sound right or um yeah sometimes i do um sometimes especially when it comes to a bass line it's really important that you won't keep the same uh, three four notes throughout the whole the whole track it's um it's really important that you play a little bit with it so once the the for example once the string section goes down a couple of notes you will just pump up the the the, the bass line like i don't know two three octaves octaves are a bit much two three notes actually um just so so there is a little bit of a difference in sound yeah. Um, it, it, I, I don't really watch it. it. I just do what sounds best because, like I said, I don't read notes. I don't know anything about music theory. Um, everything I do is by ear. It's, okay. Yeah. And that's for me. That's everything. <laughs> All right. So I think we'll round that up there then. Hey everyone, and thank you for watching the video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Make sure to go check out the full podcast, which does include also Rusin's interview. Again, thanks to Rusin for popping in and joining us. I really enjoyed having him there and so did the other hosts. Till next time, though, thanks very much and bye bye. Have a great day.